again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are just weeks away from the city elections. Um, two weeks from today, actually. Is it? Really? Yeah, crazy. I think today's the 23rd. Maybe it's a week. No, it's, the, yeah, wow. Two weeks from today. Wow. Two weeks from today. I'm like, wait, today's the 19th. Today's the 19th. Yeah, two weeks from today. So, um, yeah, that's creeping up on us. Yeah. Um, I'm channeling full for everyone. Yeah, I'm channeling home. warm. I did um, Sideway, so we, right? We taped this on Tuesday mornings, and um, the last couple weeks I try to throw extra sine waves into the mix just for fun. Um, so Dan and I host a sine wave out in front of our house because we live on Farney Street, so there's oh, tons it's... of traffic. So we always say, you know, come on over, have a cup of coffee, wave some signs. But I'll tell you, the response for Victoria is just really positive like That's I good. always feel that way when I'm you know it's easy to just you get caught up and ignore the negatives or whatever <laughs> but I really do sense that when we're doing these sine waves the people are just like waving and beeping and I'm like huh very few people throwing you the finger, things like that. Man, um, I mean, thank goodness uh, the Trump years are past us because I would do sine waves and I'm just oh, like, just were... by default of being a Republican, like people would scream like- Scream at you. They still do randomly, but usually yeah. you just nod and smile and wave, whatever. Um, so anyways, um, I did that this morning. So my teeth are still cold. Cause, oh, wow. you know, 7.30 in the morning today was like 40. Yeah, today was definitely the first time I have my coat. I grabbed I that scarf that oh, you yeah, brought me I from know. Florida last time. I said to Louis, leaving the house, except for my black stockings, I was like, I could be in Paris today. <laughs> I was I was feeling it. But, uh, oh. you know, man, just the gift that keeps on giving out yeah. there. So, so, um... So you said there are all these salaries. Because you were in Florida. I was. How so was Florida? Florida was warm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was 88 degrees. That was pretty nice. Uh, I went for Tom Woods' yep. 2000th episode. Yep. That is a hard word to say. 2000th. Almost as hard as 20,000th because uh, I had to do that for a long time. So it was awesome. It was at a four-star resort. So, you know, I nice. mean, in Florida, four or five pools. I, I was going to say, you have hair. a random hair. I could I, see it. I, and I was like, oh Sorry. my God, that would drive me nuts. Sorry, guys. Yes. All right. The hair is gone. I can see. So, um, really fun episode. They had, you know, Scott Horton from antiwar.com mm -hmm. gave a great speech. Uh, thousands of people, 2,500, I think they said. Uh, so, all in all, a good time was had by good. all. So while Carla was gone, because she didn't see the paper, because she wasn't here and she reads the paper in real life. I do. Like, yeah. um, I only lady. get the paper on Sundays. Um, I read the rest of it online. Um, so in Sunday's paper, they published the top earners for Manchester and the top earners for the state. Um, just know, because this is a little misleading if you don't know, this does not as include any school department employees. What um, is that? The city, because the city employees get, it, it, we're stupid. We, we have like two different, two completely different systems. All the employee benefits and payroll for them, the schools goes through this, and then all the payroll and employees and benefits for everybody else goes through this. And if we just had one streamlined all one city, we'd probably save money, but silly, we can't have that. So um, there's about 400 and some odd names listed here. Okay. And this only gets them down to 84,000 in salary. Uh, most of the, I would, yeah. So, so, so can I venture some guesses? I swear I haven't looked at any of this. I'm just going to go on what I know from previous times. Top um, salary earner, the Top person salary who runs earner the was Jamie, airport. No, um, no, actually a retiring police lieutenant. Because when you retire from the city, wow. you get all sorts of back pay and bonuses and like you can to accumulate all and... this, all this time. And then we pay you rather than you just taking the time while you're working. Um, so the top salary was Jamie Gallant, who's a retired police lieutenant who made, now I'm gonna preface this, the median household income. Median meaning there are just as many people above, above as there below. is just as many people below. It is not the average income, it is the midpoint where they're, you're in the middle. Household income, so if there's two people working or whatever, in Manchester is just over $60,000 a year. So just Sounds know that, that, right. the, yeah. that the middle line in Manchester is about $60,000 a year. I um, I think the per capita income, which means per person on average, is about thirty one, thirty two thousand dollars $32,000 a year. 
which kind of fits into the 60, right? Sure. Retired uh, police lieutenant, and I'm not knocking police because they I, they should get paid well for their job. They have a sucky job, whatever. $256,768.72 last year. Wow. That's a lot. So then a quarter of a million dollars. No. So then behind them is the airport director, which... Oh, wow. Because he, he was making three twenty last time. Well, I there's looked. a different airport director. Oh, Dip, okay. So we're, we drop them back down, but there, hmm. he only makes $230,000 now. Um, and then wow. if you look at the next one was... Well, Car- our uh, airlines has declined, flights so less. I yeah. guess we just got spurred in. I yeah. almost flew spurred. So spurt. then it goes um, <laughs> retired police chief Carl Capano at 216. Current police chief um alan aldenberg at 204 police captain fire captain police officer and it goes through um the first non-police fire is kevin shepherd who's the public works director makes 180 um so, so all our top police are making over 200 uh, well no i mean a lot of the police you know I'm always torn because I think about like what different people get paid in different professions. You know, if you work in, uh, if you're a computer engineer, you might make, you know, easily make 80 grand a year. So then I think about it and I'm like, okay, so should a fireman or a a police officer make comparable for what they have to do? And I'm like, I'm not begrudging anybody making a decent income. But when there are 400 or so, not including anybody on the school side of things, who are making 84,000 or above when the median household income is only 60,000 there seems to be a um you know a, mis- a disparity a, dispar- a disparity and, and 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 this excludes the benefits right oh uh, this is just sal- this so is just this money so this is just salary yeah. and then we're talking These about are dollars this is not including their health benefits or the retirement right. benefits right so so, people- so this 60,000 would really that just includes i mean that That's just you know your you're not getting yeah you're and, not- but most of those people most people you know i mean think about you and your neighbors and your friends don't have um might not even have health insurance through their employer or anything. You know, I mean, I work with people who have to, you know, go into the the insurance pool, which is not cheap. And that comes out of that 60,711 medi- median household income. So let's just parse this out a little bit in the sense that, so so maybe the question would be, are these salaries above market? And if so, why? So if... The median household income is about 60000 and people who are doing, I mean, I think the librarian in well, Manchester always, makes over $100,000, right? I, I tried to blow out. So then the question is, okay, would that be a market price? And my guess is probably not, right? No. Because what happens is when you take the market out of the equation, you don't allow competition what you actually allow, which is one of the challenges we see with unions, is sort of collusion in order to um, to artificially inflate salaries. So while Tammy says, you know, we don't begrudge anyone uh, making a decent salary, maybe the question becomes, how do we define what is a decent right. salary? Because if someone is making a salary that is above what the market would bear right. for the same job, then the city is exploiting us the taxpayers to the benefit of a small special interest group and so that would be the concern and what about this you know and i've said this before in different contexts not just looking at individual salaries or whatever um the role of government the purpose of the city government is not to be an employer that is just not what they're there for they are there to provide you the people of manchester the necessary services that the government feels they need, you know, okay, so they plow the roads, they maintain the roads, they maintain the parks, all these different things. And I've often thought when you put out jobs in the government, rather than say, here's this job and it pays $80,000 a year, put that job out to bid and see who will do it for less. Because there are jobs, I bet, that you could get somebody to do do well for far less than we pay. But that's because too many people think of the government as an employer. We do not sell a product. We do not generate legitimate income. We just take money from people and then spend it elsewhere. Taxation so, is theft. So 
in the case of, say, the librarian, the librarian too, or whatever, whatever the job is, the tax assessor, whatever that individual job is, why doesn't that job just have a salary cap. The mayor is capped at $68,000 in the in our city charter. Why don't we, I know what the argument back is, but why <laughs> don't we say, well, you wanna, if you would like to be the tax assessor, the tax assessor job caps out at 108, whatever, some number. And the argument will be, well, you'll never get good people for those jobs. And I disagree because I think there are plenty of people who would take a job at, that we are currently paying somebody $110,000 a year, which is above the market rate. And, well, and but get the thing is also sometimes when they criticize these ideas, it's like, well, then you fire the person who wasn't good if that's the right. fear, right? So because of the way the government is structured, everyone has this fear of making any decision because anytime something happens, it's impossible to turn the yep. ship around. Well, how about we start to be a little more nimble and we, we reduce that issue? So, you know, we've said it before, but government, there's an app for that, yep. right? So what are the services that are actually useful? So things like plowing the road. But I'm, we don't try the plowers happy, a lot. There's you know, no plower in on the that top, list. Right. So, and he's the one who's got to drive around in the snowstorm and clear the streets. Right. But I'm just like, why couldn't we have a citywide app that was just like, why, why couldn't it actually be privatized, right? And a bunch of people provided the services in the same way that when we have our driveways plowed and you could just be like you'd have uber for plowing you know and so prices would compete and the prices would come down and people who provide the service might make up on volume maybe they become a big guy who's like oh i have 10 trucks working mm -hmm. for me right or whatever but when we allow the the state to move into these markets and then allow no competition then we end up with these sort of situations where there is truly a a misbalance, an unbalance, because yep. we know that a lot of these jobs, people are making more money than uh, well, I mean, the, no, it's the, just, the market would bear. It's a, it's just hard for not even the market, but the people paying it can bear. When families are only making, when the middle of the families are only making sixty thousand dollars a year, but yet they're expected to pay you know, these 400 people, $84,000 or more, that's 400 people. Now, it, the other thing I wanted to talk about is people don't necessarily realize this. So in um, in government, there's still pensions. The only only entity in the in this country probably that still has um, pension systems. Well, theoretically, there's pensions. There's no money. No, you can't, but we, you we can't, can't like have trillions and trillions, thirty trillion dollars. But in rather, debt. Than, <laughs> rather than have um, defined contribution system, which would be the city would pay in X amount, just like a 401k, a matching system. We have a defined benefit system, which means you're these pensioners are guaranteed this amount forever and ever and ever. So if you live to be 110, you know, um, you'll get a lot. Now, the way that's figured is based on the three highest years salaries. You know, they take the three best years and average those out and then it's like 50% of that. But what people also don't realize is overtime factors into that. Um, police details factor into that. So for in Manchester, um, police officers earned about almost $4 million in overtime pay in 2020. All that factors into the pension obligations that go on and on and on and on. So I have a question. You know when, when the police are uh, you know acting like the orange cone next yeah. to a the construction detail site? Work. Yeah. Yes. Is that... Um, is that part of police work or is that overtime it's, it, work? No, it's or not where overtime. So the way in? it works is, so you have a police officer, right? Let's just say Joe, the police officer, who has his regular scheduled hours. I don't know what that is. I don't think it's 40 hours a week for a police officer, to be honest, which I'm not sure I really would have a problem with because if it's an intense job, I don't know if we should be working endless hours. But anyways, so Joe, police officer, has to work this many hours according to his contract. Then if he works more hours in the car on patrol or whatever, that's overtime pay, right? Police detail is 100% voluntary. 
What? And you can work, if I'm not mistaken, I think you can only work up to something like 20 hours a week on police detail. And it pays about 50 or $60 an hour. Mm. Um, but it factor, it, it is paid through the city. It's not like it's paid. So when Verizon, you know, or when uh, uh, Consolidated Communications has to have somebody on the street because there's construction work being done, or some construction project has to have police details because they're, you know, they've got their cranes in the road. They're not paying those police officers that $60 an hour direct. They pay that through the city and the city pays them. And the city keeps like this much for administrative. So it's not the city benefiting, it is directly benefiting those um, officers that are doing it. And, but those dollars contribute to their public pension. So, so, so it's really I've misleading. Heard, I've heard that, um, and certainly you can look at, in the time I've been in Manchester, I think we've had at least three, if not four, police chiefs, I've had right? A lot lately. So. And I'm on my, so, I think well, well I, you know, so yeah, yeah. I mean, for let's say yeah. in the last ten years, yeah, yes. right. And uh, so it's my understanding that kind of when people are getting towards the end, when they know they're about to yes. pension out, there's this like push to, yes. to push. Spike. They to call spike. it spiking. So you do a lot of overtime and you do a lot of detail work and you do all this stuff so that there's three years, maybe in other years you only made 109000 And then suddenly there's three years where you made $180,000 a year. And guess what? Your pension's not based on the average pension over the entire uh, entirety of your career. It's based on the average of the three so, highest so years. So one might posit then that because it, certainly in my time, it seems like we've always had a police chief for two or three years. Mm -hmm. They always are just yep. in for that little window of time yep. and then they skip out. Well, I mean, right now, just the top four, also, there's two chiefs. Right, there are two chiefs in the top four. So, you know, just relaying the data. Um, then is it not true that a lot of the people who then receive these massive salaries that they've kind of pushed up, um, they get their bennies, and then they go and they, oh. I believe it is called double dipping. Well, it's so, I know for a fact, one of those two chiefs on the top four there is also working. Well, this is where, I, I, I don't know if I, we, people do refer to it as double dipping. I think the, the retirement, the pension system is just woefully flawed because I don't believe, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if, you could only they could only collect that pension when they you know achieve retirement age which i believe according to social security would be 62 or 65 yeah, right. 68 think... it keeps going up right but it's not that way you could they can collect a portion of their pension much earlier and then it, it, I forget exactly what I know, a lot of these it's people lot, retire when they're like 50, right? right? Like you're in the pro, I think you only have to be in the you, program you for 20 years. You shouldn't be able to uh, c collect your public pension if you're not if you're, if you're not working, reti well, if, if you're, you're not, not retired. retired and and the problem is is that it's not like it's not like somebody retires from the city and goes and works at ace hardware and a little part-time job a lot of these people do leave one public sector job and then go work in another entity so they leave the city government and they go to work for the state or they leave the city government and they go to work for another city or they leave you know this city and go to work for the county um and then they start collecting and then they pension start building, on well, that, then right? They're still, um, it would depend, I guess, because the pen, the state pension covers police and fire. Okay. You know, it's part of the state pension system. The city pension covers sit, other city employees. So it's just a weird. It's the pension system basically just doesn't work. It no longer makes. It's not a good system. Just saying. So, so I don't know. I mean, it's a, do just... you think that that's something? Okay, so those that's what the problems are. Like, if we put on our magic hats, like, how would you solve this? Is there uh, a I would way do to away do with it? public pensions? And I know there's a re I know those involved in maintaining the public pension system say, well, if you shut it off, the promises made to all these other people would wouldn't work because the number doesn't match. So why I say, okay, so we switch to a four hundred one k. Manchester okay. says, starting tomorrow, every new employee um, will will at some point be able to get matching funds for the 401k. They can put choose to put their own money into the retirement fund, just like everybody else does in their own private lives. And then at some point, the city will start matching funds. Unfortunately, because the system on the pensions was so woefully broke, those people coming in now, 
in some term probably would just have to get screwed. They wouldn't get as much matching money for until the pension system drained out and there was no more. And then the city, I would feel much better if now, you work for the city for 20 years and you... And we match your um, retirement up to a certain point, dollar for dollar. At least when you choose to leave, one, that retirement money goes with that employee. And if they go then to work to the city of Summersworth or, you know, the town of Derry or whatever, they could continue to add to their retirement fund. And then, this, but M Manchester taxpayers would no longer be on the hook for their retirement. It could be done. It's just, there's no, there's, there's too many employees who do not want their promises touched. They don't, it's like the third rail of politics. You can't talk about saying the money doesn't exist. It's a fallacy that the, these pensions can be sustained. It, it's a simple math equation. Now, now, to be fair, I mean, we are talking on the city level, on the state level as well. We it's have, also um, you know, now, now New Hampshire is in way better shape than I think 49 other states. Like, I mean, we're broke, oh, yeah. but we're not, we're not as broke as nearly as broke as everyone else. So I guess we have that going for us. And if I remember correctly, maybe in the last five or so years, there was some kind of audit and they looked at it and they said, okay, you know, if we do X, Y, and Z, we will be able to cover these, um, these uh, promises. But, you know, we're going to have to start to move towards different kinds of models. And I'm just really keen to see why can't we privatize some of these services? Like, well, why does that seem like such a a uh, strange suggestion to people? Because it's like, but we know that by way of example, uh, private trash services can work. They do work. They work in other places in the world. We know that private plow works because a lot of us use them if you live in a rural area. So it's sort of like, I feel like we could be trending towards um, trying to change some of this because the argument also that people are like, oh, no, it'll do it for less money. It's like, well, that's not Well, that's what I mean. Like, true. if you look at any of these jobs and you say, okay, um, you know, civil engineer one, I'm not begrudging this person individually, but um, civil engineer one, $86,679. That might be perfectly reasonable for an you know for a civil engineer but when that person leaves and that position becomes open rather than say okay we have this job that pays 80,000 why don't we say we have this job we're taking bids for that job and you can still be an employee and get the benefits of being in the employee pool but what if somebody's just starting out as a civil engineer says you know what I'm out of college I'll take that job for 52. So, uh, so this is totally unrelated, but did you, you, you saw that we have all the container ships that are out oh sitting God, in, in, in the ports. Mess. So can I just uh, like rant about all the, uh, propaganda for a second? So I saw a thing today that said, uh, all the, 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 the actual shortages and all those container ships are because of, um, consumer demand no so it's because uh, it, they're not unloading the damn the, boats right so <laughs> i had a really interesting conversation with my uber driver in florida so this gentleman works for uh universal studios mm -hmm. that's his main job when uh they shut down universal studios for two months last year during uh the height of covid before florida got their senses back and uh just continued with life as normal and things went on as normal you know, go look at the compar comparative Data. results yep. from different states. Yep, yep. None of it mattered. Um, so he said that when they shut down for two months, he started becoming an Uber right. driver. He has five kids. He needs to support his family, whatever. And then he just decided to continue yeah. to do it. He was in a department, IT department, with 12 people. They, they uh, for the two months, they laid, uh, they were furloughed and all of them received their salaries. When they reopened, they only brought four of them back, I believe. Um, no, three of them back. And then there were nine who didn't really have, uh, who were furloughed further. Out of those nine, only three were brought back and five stayed on welfare because they were making more money yeah. with all the benefits that are being paid by the federal government. So we have a labor shortage. The labor shortage is being caused by several things. It is by um, people not wanting to 
people don't want to go back to work, work for what they used to make because they got more money for a while. So now they want more money all, all the time. So, <laughs> um, you know, uh, we have inflation yep. that is, uh, let's talk again let's talk about, about steak being, you know, steak tips are on sale now for $7.99 a pound, not $3.99 a pound. So I swear, I actually saw this come out of uh, the legacy news. Oh, inflation is going to be good for you. You should celebrate getting inflation because your salary is going to be higher. No. Let me tell you something. Maybe if you work if for you the government. If you have $100 <laughs> and something costs $10 and this starts to cost $20 and you you're getting get... $200, you haven't made any more money. No. <laughs> so, you know, th there's this massive distortion that is just going on in our labor markets, in our consumer yep. markets, in all well, of because it. And, and it's all based on this... Um, a lot of it is just all on this, for lack of a better word, this propaganda that's being pushed constantly on people. And I'm going to diverge into something else because this is annoying the crap out of me. <laughs> Everybody watching this, understand this. And this isn't a this isn't a political thing. This is a just a this is just the way it works. If you're vaccinated, that's fine. You are probably less likely to suffer severe. Um, COVID sickness. If you're not vaccinated, that's also fine. That's your decision. Everybody should have that choice. The reality is, in today's world, based on science and the data, we can see that the vaccinated people are spreading are just as <laughs> can still catch and can still spread COVID. Yep. So when you look, when any entity says Unless you're vaccinated, you need to wear a mask. They are not following the science. If you think one person needs to wear a mask to keep these people safe, then all people would need to wear a mask to keep those people safe. If you're saying non-vaccinated people must wear a mask, vaccinated people who can still spread the virus don't need to wear a mask, that is based on propaganda and shaming not on science. It is getting old. I'm tired of tiptoeing around it. Too many people are listening to sound bites instead of thinking on their feet. There is nothing wrong with getting vaccinated if that is your choice and you think you're, that is a better choice for you and your body. That is a decision that should be made only by you and your doctor and your family, not by the government not by people on social media. Start thinking for yourself because this is so out of control. I don't even, I'm at a loss of words. I All know right. that doesn't happen. Check anyway. out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, Stories of Hope Mostly. You can find it on Amazon and CarlaGarrick.com. We're going to run out of time. I, I'm just going to shamelessly make a plug for Victoria. You can visit her website to donate or volunteer your time. Victoria Sullivan for mayor.com. Come on out and help your next mayor. That's all we got. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.